Welcome back to another episode of Your Money Mindset, guiding you to achieve lasting financial freedom and peace of mind. I'm John McGregor. We all know the markets have been extremely volatile over the past seven months, in fact, probably the last seven years, and maybe even get choppier as the election gets closer and closer. And we're now pushing back into all-time highs in parts of the market, and in my experience, this is when a lot of mistakes can occur with investors. So stay with me here. I think this episode could save you and make you a lot of money. This pandemic has created great drops in the market, but also great increases in opportunities. And many are insisting a big crash is on the horizon. And no one will ever know in advance, <clears throat> given this environment. <clears throat> It can be very difficult to know what to do and how best to manage your emotions. So why do I say emotions? Well, if you look at investor performance, there are really two things that can and will wreak havoc in investors' portfolios. That's fear and greed. As the chart shows, people love to get in the market when that market is at their all-time highs. But when the markets are falling or at the bottom, they have a strong tendency to panic and sell and get out. Hence, they buy high and sell low and continue this strategy until broke. They do exactly what they're not supposed to do. And you know, the most fundamental rule of investing, right, is to buy low and sell high. But unfortunately, that is not the case with most individual investors. Because as I said, the great threat to people's wealth is fear and greed. But when you boil those two words down, really at the bottom, what are we really talking about? We're talking about human emotions, and human emotions throughout the history of the stock market has been the great destroyer of wealth. Look at someone like Warren Buffett, you know, who's arguably, arguably the greatest investor we have ever seen in our time. And his, his mantra is to be fearful when people are greedy and greedy when people are fearful. I always find it fascinating how we, we shop at Costco, right? And we buy these huge boxes of Lego waffles, toilet paper, and giant containers of shampoo. Why? Well, it's because we save money. You know, suits go on sale 50% off, and what do we do? We buy two of them. Yet when the market is at an all-time low, essentially it's on sale, we don't want to have anything to do with it. But when the market is, is very expensive, we say to ourselves, wow, I'm missing out, and I really need to jump in right now. That's human emotions, my friends. Successful inv investing isn't just about picking the right investments. It's about managing your emotions and avoiding those common behavioral mistakes so many make. It was Morgan Housel who just released his book, The Psychology of Money, great book, in which I particularly enjoyed a quote that borrows from Napoleon and his definition of a military genius. It says, a good definition of investing genius is the man or woman who can do the average thing when all those around them are going crazy. <laughs> and here's where the rubber hits the road and something I've been preaching for years with my clients. This is the tried and true Dalbar study. And Dalbar is an organization that I've worked with, uh, worked with closely for many years. And they're most known for a study that they publish showing how the average investor performs in the market versus the overall market itself. So let me explain. Going back many decades, the average rate of return of the stock market, if, if we were to simply put money in and forget about it, it's approximately 10% over time. And over time is the key term here. It doesn't mean 10% every year. It means up 15 one year, down five the next, up 11, down one the next, and so forth. So, but the average rate of return over time comes out to be approximately 10%. In fact, it rarely ever hits 10% on the dot. So you can see some wild swings from one year to the next. But here's the deal. The average investor doesn't even come close to hitting a 10% rate of return over time. In fact, the average investor historically gets approximately two to 3% annually. And check out this chart. This chart, the Dalbar chart, represents performance of various asset classes from the beginning of 1994 to the end of 2013. At the bottom, you'll see performances from left to right. You have technology companies, then you have the overall stock market, which is represented by the S&P 500. Then you have uh, Europe's stock market, followed by long-term US treasuries and gold. But in the green box, you can see how the average investor did during that same time period compared to the others. Now, the first question I get is, John, how is this even possible? It all goes back to this chart, the fear and greed chart. 
People are essentially jumping in when the market's hot and running for the hills when things are not. Yep, again, human emotion. Most investors are hardwired to get in the way of their portfolio's success over time. So I wanna discuss five common mistakes I see people making with their investments that you should not be doing in any market environment. Number one, trying to time the market. That is a fool's game and should never be attempted by average investors. When you're doing that, you're thinking really, you're really thinking short term and that could be deadly. I mean, just think about everything this country and this world has gone through and is going through now, right? And today, the market keeps plugging along. We've seen wars, oil embargoes, assassinations, recessions, currency crisis, housing meltdowns, hurricanes, and now we have COVID. There will always be negativity, always. But trying to get in and out based on fear, based on news, is very, very dangerous. Okay, number two, stop investing at all. I hear so often from people, well, well, John, I just don't like the current environment, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna sit this one out and stop putting money in my retirement plan right now. Again, slow and steady wins the race. And this concept pertains to a term called dollar cost averaging, which is systematically putting money in the market on a regular and consistent basis, no matter what's going on at the time. This is a very successful way to manage your money. You're not timing the market, you're simply gradually and over time putting money to work for you. Okay, number three, chasing last year's returns. Over the past 26 years now of working with thousands of clients, I still get the question, John, what looks hot these days? Or I saw a stock or a mutual fund with exceptional returns last year. Should we be buying that? Chasing last year's hot returns can be a recipe for disaster. You need to focus on the long-term prospects of that, of that investment. And you know, it's funny, I've seen so many studies showing the top hottest mutual funds the prior year, but they never make the list the following year. So don't fall for past returns. Focus on the long-term viability of that investment in the future, that's the key. Okay, number four, staying in cash. Staying in cash can feel safe, just like a boat docked in a harbor, but that's not what the boat was designed for, right? As your money sits in cash, the value erodes over time due to inflation, and having your investable money sit in cash will never, ever get you that investment portfolio you need for your retirement. Just remember, the best way, the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The second best time is now. Okay, finally, number five, not having a strategy. And I know that can sound scary and intimidating. And the question you're probably thinking is, well, John, how do I figure that out? Well, there are a lot of ways to get started on this, and it's not complicated. With your workplace retirement plan, connect with the financial advisor who oversees the plan and ask them for their advice. Schedule a meeting, pick up an investment book or two. You know, a great book, and I'm serious about this, is called Investing for Dummies. It's great. It starts with the basics using very simple terminology and another one by Kiplinger's. They have a great one called uh, The Guide to Investing Success, Making Money Today in Stocks, Bonds, Mutual Funds, and Real Estate. And there are all kinds of books and podcasts and, and YouTubes explaining very simple investing strategies. And don't forget my book. Just don't go along this uh, go along this blindly. You got to get involved, get get proactive. It's just too important not to. So with that, I hope that was helpful. And I wanted to mention and offer for free a great way to get started, and that's with the Thrive Path Assessment on my website. And the question is, where are you now financially, and where could you be in the future? And your answer to this question can and will determine your success and overall happiness in your life. The Thrive Path Assessment, it's a simple 10 question assessment. It's about how you connect your brain to your wallet and how you forge a new path to true financial freedom and real peace of mind. It's about determining how healthy or unhealthy your relationship with money truly is. And in my experience, it's not your income that determines your financial joy, fulfillment, and abundance. It's your relationship with money that will determine your financial life and your future happiness. So I wanna offer you an opportunity, an opportunity to discover once and for all how close you actually are to live the life you deserve to live, the life you've, you've always envisioned for yourself and for your family. The Thrive Path Assessment was specifically designed for you to determine where in fact you are on your path to financial freedom and peace of mind. This assessment 
that can and will be one of the most important steps you take in your journey to financial freedom. So take 10 minutes, click here to find out now. I'm John McGregor, founder of ThrivePath, the revolutionary solution to your financial freedom and peace of mind. And here's to your financial success and overall happiness, upward and onward, and we'll see you next time. Take care.